Scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So it says, but whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Take note, the world through him might be saved, not through opinions, through him. The Bible says there is no other name under heaven that is given unto man by which we must be saved. As we begin to draw the curtain expecting the return of Jesus, it is important that we become more intentional and emphatic as to the harvest the salvation of souls when we gather like this it is impossible that in this crowd of people inside and outside there would be no people who are in need of jesus he sends them by himself the bible only mandates that we pray it says the harvest is wide but the laborers are few and he says pray the lord of the harvest that he would send laborers and so it's important to begin tonight with a call. There are several people who are yet to make definite decisions as far as submitting to the Lordship of Jesus is concerned. Now listen very carefully. What does it mean to be saved? It doesn't mean to walk out here and cry, recite a chant and go back. It is very possible that you can do all that and yet you are not saved. The matter of salvation is not about coming forward or remaining or reciting something you were told to recite. Are we together now? According to scripture, there are two major components that must be involved in genuine salvation. Number one, that the message of salvation must be articulately communicated. You cannot give your life to nothing. If you believe in Jesus as a friend, you are not wrong, but you are not saved by that declaration, that belief. If you believe in Jesus as a prophet, an apostle, you believe in Jesus as God, that does not save you. There is an exact information about Jesus you must believe that translates to salvation. Are we together? Paul preached that message intelligently on the day of Pentecost. He said, let it be known to you that this same Jesus that you have crucified has today been exalted as Lord and Christ. It matters what you believe about Jesus. When it has to do, listen carefully, when it has to do with salvation, you must believe. Listen carefully. You must believe and admit your current state that you are unable to help yourself and that by the righteousness of the law and the righteousness that comes through yourself and through your works, you are unable to be saved. Salvation only comes through faith that is in Christ. Are we together? The Bible does tell us that our righteousness, the best of us is as filthy rags. There's no point for argument. And then the Bible also declares that the wages of sin is death. As simple as that. That the soul that sins will die. And by that verdict, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Are we together? So Jesus now comes as a mediator. He comes as an expression of the Father's love. That since you are unable to meet the righteous standards of God, I have come 
in covenant to receive of your nature of sin and to pay the due price, the due penalty for sin. And Isaiah the prophet was speaking and said, he shall see the travail of his soul. Jesus did not come to die for himself. No. Jesus did not come to die for a few people. For in Paul's message on the day of Pentecost, he said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And, and Peter replied, he said, repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise. He says, for the promise is unto you and unto your children, even as many as are far off, they that the Lord himself will call. So when it has to do with salvation, it is for everyone. But you must believe in the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus, that Jesus came, became sin, became a man, and he died in exchange to purchase redemption for you. Are we together? That when you believe in Jesus Christ with your heart, according to Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 9 and 10, that if you believe with your heart the Lord Jesus Christ and you confess with your mouth his lordship, you shall be saved. And the law is in verse 10. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13 says, neither... Um, is there, he said, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. There is no salvation in any other. Now, the beautiful thing about salvation is that God still respects your will, your ability to choose. That means as an act of your will and your volition consciously, you can listen to this message and say, Jesus, I choose as an act of my will to reject you, meaning I reject your life, meaning I reject your Holy Spirit, meaning I reject the potential for dominion, meaning I reject eternal security and redemption, meaning I reject everything that is God. Rejecting Jesus is a public declaration of your eternal fraternity with Satan. The moment you reject Jesus consciously, Satan no longer becomes an illegal person in your life. To reject Jesus is automatically to embrace Satan. To embrace all the causes, the woes, and all the things that plague our world today. Submitting your heart and your life to Jesus is more than becoming a Christian. It's more than the religiosity of coming into a faith practice that acknowledges Jesus as Lord. It is a relationship. It says, behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. This is the only faith practice I know of that thrives on relationship, not just rituals. Although he is God, you can know him. This is eternal life, John 17 and verse 3, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And we are mandated by God to go and preach, he says, to preach the gospel to all creation. What is the gospel? The good news. A holistic capture of all that Jesus has done as proof of the Father's love. Now, you can reject Jesus whilst you are listening to me, whether online or on site. I will painfully respect your will, however, to your detriment. But Jesus is giving someone a chance right now. You probably were invited for the first time. You are somewhere scattered within, outside. Or for someone, you've heard these teachings and these messages again and again, but you are yet to make up your mind. The Bible says today, if you hear his voice, you can hear his voice and assume he's not speaking to me. Apostle, I came to be healed. Talk about healing. Apostle, I came because I'm tired of poverty. I came to access the grace for favor. Indeed, you will find it because this is the house of God. But can I tell you, if you come to my house and eat my food, sleep on my bed, use my restroom and ignore me and walk away, you cannot call me friend. He desires a relationship. You can come and receive of the fringe benefits of redemption. But more than the things that he will give you, he's presenting to you tonight the gift of himself. The greatest gift that can be given. Himself with his life coming alongside his wisdom, his power. And you may say, Apostle, you don't know who is sitting and listening to you. You don't know the story of my life. I've done everything evil to be done. Jesus 
extends his love even for people like you for while he walked upon the earth he said those that are without sickness do not need a physician now that you have acknowledged that you need his help he can come to you as the savior even the physician he's the savior he can move your mountain my god is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever the author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave your savior he can move a mountain my god is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever the author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave hallelujah i'm about to make an altar call no looking left, no looking right. Jesus is speaking to you. No waiting for someone to be the first. Let me watch who comes out so that I save myself public embarrassment. No. An invitation to Jesus is like an invitation by one who is greater than the president of the nation, as a matter of fact, to come. We, we rejoice over many things when you are given um a visa or a passport or citizenship of another nation people rejoice they roll on the ground when you are given a job you rejoice over your employment letter what jesus offers you is life even abundant life are we together i'm going to make a call one to five calling on two groups of people number one those who have heard me and are determined while you were listening to me the holy spirit whether you know him or not you know that he's the one nudging you i brought you to koinonia tonight maybe your first time you may have been here before and you are saying i need jesus i'm tired of religion i'm tired of playing church games i am ready to make it right with jesus and then there may be a group of people you are saying apostle i remember making this call maybe on a crusade ground maybe listening to a tape but right now my life has gone haywire i need restoration i'm calling these two groups of people very boldly inside outside please make sure that you come to jesus with determination and let me say this please if you are outside um once the front is full you will do well to just move to the led screens and then just participate there while we pray for those who are following online the Lord Jesus is calling you wherever you are. Please leave your seat and come. I begin my counting now. One. Savior, he can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Forever the offer of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Sing Savior. Savior. He can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Jesus conquered my pain. He rose and conquered my shame. Jesus conquered my shame. Come. Come to Jesus. Come. Come to Jesus. Young and old. Educated and uneducated. Rich, poor, and everything in between. Come. Salvation is for all men. Neither is there salvation in any other name. There is no other name given unto men under heaven by which we must be saved. Now listen to me. 
I really salute all of you who have made this bold, taken this bold step to come. The next thing I would ask you to do is to mean every confession and every word. Are we together now? Yes. Some of you are crying. There's nothing to be ashamed and afraid of. For our God is champion forevermore. as high as it can get this is unto Jesus the son the king the savior Lord and even Christ say this after me as loud as you can say Lord Jesus tonight I declare that I believe in you I declare that you are my savior I declare that you are my Lord I declare that you are my king. I believe with my heart that you died for my sin. And I confess with my mouth that you rose from the grave even for me. Right now, I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken. Say it again, it's broken. I declare that from tonight I am a child of God I am a bona fide recipient of eternal life amen keep your hands lifted father the Bible declares that as many who will come to you that you will in no wise cast away you have brought this many to you the Bible says I believe in the gospel it calls it the power of God unto salvation and in the name of Jesus I declare over you according to the integrity of scripture I declare your sins forgiven and I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God the power of sin Satan hell and the grave it is destroyed from this moment in the name of Jesus Christ and here is my prophecy for you from tonight the Sun will no more give you sunlight by day the moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. When Yahweh binds up the wounds of this world, He heals all the bruises inflicted by this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for making this bold declaration. Now, there are counselors. If you're here in front, there are counselors just by my right, which will be your left from where you are. I want you to please in concert and very politely just follow them they will have a word with you very quickly and then you'll join us as we continue in the course of the service let's give them a big god bless you as they go koinonia is this the best you can do for salvation what a harvest tonight unto jesus be all the glory keep clapping until they leave keep clapping until they leave No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till the Christ be formed. No eye has seen, say, no, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit. Word. 
Christ is formed in me. Very powerful song. I submit to you until my healing is perfected. I submit to you until your wisdom is perfected in my life. I submit to you until that which I desire that makes for life and godliness becomes my experience. May that be someone's testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All right, so let's go to a brief discussion and then we trust God for a mighty move of the Spirit tonight. You will know that you encountered the God of the Bible tonight. In the name of Jesus. Listen, listen. Pay close attention. For God has something to say. You know that song? It's a prophetic word for people who easily get distracted. Hold on, I'm not singing. It's a prophetic word. Because there are people, the Bible says the sower is God himself and the seed is the word. There are many people when the word of God is about to come, the spirit of distraction, punching their phones up and down, maybe even chatting, doing a lot of things that distract them. And then the rima word for you comes and your spirit is not prepared to receive. So listen, listen, pay close attention. For God has something to say. God's love for us is unconditional. According to Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 3. Jeremiah 31 and verse 3. It says, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yeah, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore with my loving kindness have I drawn thee. God's love for us is unconditional. According to Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, Romans 5 verse 8 tells us that God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He did not wait for us to sign a form that if he died, we would not waste his sacrifice. He took the risk as a representation of his love. So when it has to do with the love of God for us, there is no question as to the fact that God loves us. Whether you are aware or not, it is truth according to scripture that God's love for me, God's love for you is unconditional. Now pay attention. But the manifestation of his promises in our lives is highly conditional. God's love for me, God's love for you is unconditional. It remains eternally so. But the manifestation of his promises in our lives is highly conditional. Please listen very carefully. That God loves me, God loves you in whatever state you find yourself. It does not take away the love of God for you. But just because you are loved by God does not mean you will live a victorious life. Listen carefully again. That God's love for us is unconditional. But the manifestation of his promises in our lives is highly conditional. Two scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. Please pay attention. It, it says 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently you see a condition there hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth this is his promise to you but there are conditions if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that he commands. Scripture number two, Isaiah 1, 19 and 20. Popular scripture, Isaiah 1, verse 19 and 20. Let's read together in concert. Ready? One to read. If ye be willing, uh -huh, ye shall eat the good of the land. So whether... Whether the good of the land gets to you or not, the Bible tells you there is good in every land. But that if you are willing and obedient, then you shall eat the good of the land. Verse 20. 
it says but if ye refuse and rebel ye shall be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the Lord had spoken it so one last time God's love for us is unconditional but the manifestation of his promises in our lives is highly conditional this is the first thing I want you to get tonight so the main issue I wrote here the main issue tonight is not the question of whether God loves us or not settle that once and for all whether you think he loves you or not do you know why I'm saying this because this is usually the first thing people say when they find themselves plagued with all kinds of tragedies does God really love me watching my family go through this maybe a financial situation maybe a health crisis I'm telling you now based on the authority and the integrity of scripture that God's love for all men in fact the Bible does not say God has love it does not even say God shows love alone it says God is love it's not something he does it is who he is so the main issue I repeat here tonight is not the question of whether God loves us or not it is a question of why his promises and did you know, by the way, the Bible t says that the promises of God are yea and amen. I think that should be 1 Corinthians 1.20. Please give it to us. Let's try that scripture. That should be 1 Corinthians 1.20. Did I get that right? Look for it for me. The promises of God are yea and amen. The promises of God are yea and amen. Even though the Bible declares that his promises are yea and amen. Thank you. Okay. Second Corinthians. For the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. So the Bible here tells us that the promises of God are yea and amen. Do you know what that means? There is a guarantee that if and when the conditions that release those promises are engaged, God is committed by his integrity. He's bound himself with an oath and a promise that by these two immutable things the Bible declares, it is impossible for God to lie. The question is why... We have not seen the visible expression of these promises in our lives. And remember, we dealt with it here some weeks ago, according to 2 Peter 1 and verse 4. Wherefore have we been given great, exceeding great and precious promises, the Bible says, that by these we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. So the Bible tells us that we have been given in Christ and through Christ and by Christ, exceeding great and precious promises. Listen carefully. The promises of God I wrote here are activated in the life of the believer by engaging specific spiritual forces now this is i'm getting to the meat of my teaching now the promises of god are activated in the life of the believer by engaging specific spiritual forces someone shout it say spiritual forces one more time say spiritual forces hallelujah yes there are spiritual forces that work in synergy, work in honor to God's word to see to it that the promises of God are made manifest here and now in the life of the believer. And this is where I want you to listen very carefully. When you come into Christ, you receive of the life of God like our precious people did minutes ago. And then the Holy Spirit now on legal basis comes to live in you and in partnership with the word of God he begins to teach you not just the ways of the kingdom but he begins to show you the various spiritual forces I call them systems of advantage that have been provided for in Christ and by Christ for your overall excelling as the believer it is the Holy Spirit's assignment, Jesus said, that when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide us into all truth. Do you believe that? So the promises of God are activated in the life of the believer by engaging specific spiritual forces. There are a number of them. 
and I want to reveal a few of them. We may not discuss them in detail. This is a miracle service. But just to put you in that position of responsibility that if certain dimensions of the promises of God are not at work in your life, even though you are a believer, it means that you have not recognized or sustained the intelligence to engage and even release the spiritual forces that have been allocated for your victory. Are we together? I wrote down a few of them here and I want you to listen very carefully. Number one, the force of light. There are many spiritual forces that have been given to the believer that when you do business for want of word with these forces, the result is that your life becomes invincible, even a sign and a wonder. The first force that is given to the believer to help your overall excelling is the force of light. Isaiah 60 and verse 1, it says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. Arise, shine, for your light is come. Arise, shine, for your light is come. That means remain on the ground and remain defeated and inactive because of the bankruptcy of your light. You arise and shine only when your light comes. John chapter 1 and verse 5, the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Say the force of light. Number two, for sake of time, is the force of prayer. The second spiritual force that is given to the believer to help us manifest the promises of God. Listen carefully. The force of prayer. Mark 11, 23 and 24. Mark 11, 23 and 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass the bible leaves that believer with an assurance that he shall have whatsoever he saith 24 he says therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray not if you pray when ye pray believe that ye receive them and thou shall have them the force of prayer number three the force of fasting there are many of them i just put a few of them together to be able to show you that if your life is bankrupt of the manifestation of the promises of god it will be that you have not engaged one or more or even all of these promises the force of fasting Jesus himself fasted and prayed. The disciples who would later become apostles fasted and prayed. Fasting happened in the New Testament. It happened in the Old Testament. Are we together? There is power that is released while we fast. Number four, the force of faith. The force of faith. First John chapter 5 and verse 4, it says... This is the victory, whatsoever is born of God. 1 John 5, 4, it says, Overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Even our faith. Even our faith. The force of faith. It says, when he was teaching about the whole armor of God, remember? In Ephesians chapter 6, I believe, Apostle Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus and he was teaching them to put the whole armor of God and he calls faith a shield wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. The force of faith. Every time Jesus was helping the disciples to reveal to them why they did not have some things happen in their life he would usually trace it to the issue of unbelief why couldn't we do this in fact when peter came when the devil came to manipulate peter jesus rebukes the spirit and says get thee behind me satan and he said peter satan has desired to sift you like wheat he said but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted, he says, strengthen your brethren. The force of faith. Are we still together? Number five, very quickly, the force of praise. 
the force of praise. Psalm 67 from verse 5 and 6. These are spiritual forces, mysteriously powerful, that help the saints to transport the promises of God from the prophetic dimension into the experiential dimension. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let the people praise thee, verse 6. It says, then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. Praise. That mysterious weapon. There are people who have held on to praise alone, and with it they have, they have commanded tremendous levels of victory. Is someone learning? A quick recap, spiritual forces that help believers to walk in dominion, manifesting the promises that have been given to the saints. The force of light, the force of prayer, the force of fasting, the force of faith, the force of faith. Number six, the force of favor. The force of favor very powerful mysterious spiritual force that can help men to maximize life and maximize destiny i was preaching for a dear precious pastor friend yesterday and we had an opportunity to discuss a bit on favor and it dawned on me again i have taught this for all my life and yet i never get tired of teaching on favor because my life is a product of the favor of god The force of favor where God compels men and compels systems to respond favorably favorably showing you unusual kindness giving you unusual access and commanding towards you unusual acceptance these are the tripartite indices that measure the presence of favor one more time let me repeat it the presence of unusual kindness unusual access unusual acceptance when these tripartite manifestations happen in your life you are favored indeed walking in abundance moving with the speed of the holy ghost i am favored i am walking in abundance Moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost, I am favored. The force of favor. Listen, do you know? Not the six that I've listed alone. There are people who have zero over six working in their life. How, for God's sake, using spiritual intelligence that you have now, how do you expect to walk and live in dominion, not understanding the force of light, the all-surpassing supremacy of light over darkness, the force of prayer, the force of fasting, the force of faith, the force of praise. Imagine with me, with what you know now, a man's spiritual life without these forces working. Number seven, the force of sacrifice. These are the spiritual forces that control the arrival and the manifestation of the promises of God that the Bible says are yea and amen. The force of sacrifice. Psalm 50 and verse 5, it says, Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Sacrifice is a powerful and a deep mystery. A mystery that is practiced by both believers and even people who are unbelievers. Sacrifice is powerful. The Bible is, is full of stories, instances where men and women engage this mysterious force and they rewrote narratives over their lives. It was even this force that was engaged when God wanted to redeem man. He had to give his only begotten son. The force of sacrifice. Can I give you two more? Eight, the force of patience. Hmm. Patience is a deep, mysterious and powerful spiritual force. The Bible says to follow them who through faith and patience 
Patience is so important. It is one of the fruit of the spirit. There are many people who have been cheated out of life because of impatience. Patience is powerful. Hallelujah. I've given you eight. Let me give you one more. The force of the prophetic. The force of the prophetic. The force of the prophetic. This is so powerful. The force of the prophetic. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. Hosea 12 and verse 13. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. It was the Lord that brought them. But he used the prophetic. Now, imagine, describe for me using your imagination, ladies and gentlemen, a believer who has fully activated the force of light plus the force of prayer plus the force of fasting plus the force of faith plus the force of praise can i continue plus the force of favor plus the force of sacrifice plus the force of patience plus the force of the prophetic I will describe for you what that kind of believer will look like. Joshua 21 from verse 41, 43 to 45. That is the kind of testimony that such a believer would have. In this case, all the cities of the Levites, 43 please, 43. 43 and the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he swore to give their fathers and they possessed it the Lord gave them but it did not mean they possessed it take note the Lord gave them the land that he swore to their fathers but whether they possessed it or not was their own responsibility it was possible that they would die without possessing it and God will still say, I have given it to you. The Bible says they possessed it and dwelt therein. 44. And the Lord gave unto them rest round about. Prophesy to your life. Rest round about. One more time. Rest round about. That inevitably will be the testimony of one who understands how to engage these forces. There are still a few more, but let me tell you, these are the major forces that control triumph and dominion in this kingdom. The force of light. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me. You see, for some of you, you have one over nine. Well done for finding the one, but it's not enough as far as the testimony you desire. Even in mathematics, one over nine is F. Is that true? There is need for an upgrade. Apostle, all I do is to fast, congratulations. But that is not the only force. Apostle, all I do is to pray, congratulations. There are other forces. These forces are not this. You are not supposed to pan pick anyone that you feel is convenient the forces have been allocated for your holistic victory the challenge with believers is they pick the one that they are mentored to appreciate while ignoring others if you are part of a prayer and a prophetic ministry chances are excellent that you will pick the force of fasting alongside the force of favor add the prophetic to it and ignore the force of light ignore the force of praise even ignore the force of patience and sacrifice if god has granted you grace and you are being mentored by a strong teaching ministry chances are excellent that you will embrace the force of light and others like the force of praise and even the force of faith and then ignore others this is already a sound message for someone tonight. 
in the kingdom you are not given the liberty to pick which forces you feel you like all of them have exact roles that they play as far as helping you manifest the promises of God is concerned the force of light the force of prayer warding of the arsenals of darkness the force of fasting building up your spirit and your capacity to be discerning and to be receptive the force of faith helping you to be able to connect to the power of God that is the biblical assignment of faith to help you faith is like a host I would always say that connects you from the point where the concern is to where the power of God resides if you want to water a garden and there is a tap that is running even though that tap has an endless supply of water it may not be able to reach your garden is that true and so you go and look for a host and connect it sometimes it, it will be a very long host connecting it from the tap to where that garden is and the moment you open up the tap you find out that is watering your plant that's the assignment of faith faith connects you to the power of God faith connects the problem to the power of God so if you do not build your faith, it will be like a small host. You want to stretch it that far to reach your garden. But because you have not elongated and enlarged that host, in the Bible, there are all kinds of, and all dimensions of faith. There is no faith or zero faith. There is little faith as taught in scripture. There is great faith. There is exceeding great faith. It's up to you to choose where you want your faith to be. The force of praise, the force of favor, the force of sacrifice. Praise is very powerful, for instance. As powerful as John the Baptist was coming in the spirit and the power of Elijah, a lady danced his head out of his body. She danced to the point that the king made a request and said, for dancing and making me excited, say anything you want, I will give you to the half of my kingdom. Now, I took out time to do a little research to write the various needs of men. I wrote a few and I want you to listen. I have found out based on scripture, observation, and even based on the work that I do, that these are usually the major needs of people. These are the things that they desire even tonight. Walk with me as I run through this list. Number one, speed. There is a desperate need for speed. Most people are desirous. They desire to gain time because they may have lost time in ignorance as a result of all kinds of delays. Number two, fruitfulness. Number three, restoration. I'm listing for you the many problems and I'm sure while I'm saying it, some of you are already smiling. Thank God. Because that you just mentioned my own restoration. Healing for many people. Bodily healing. Deliverance from all kinds of spirits and influences. I'm listing the various problems that draw people to come for a service like this. Number five, exemption. Apostle, they're about to downsize people in my company and I do not have any advantage based on maybe tribal affiliation or based on experience and so on and so forth. But I hear that there is a mystery in the kingdom called the mystery of exemption where men can be exempted. It happened while the ten plagues were being unleashed upon Egypt. That on one hand there was darkness but in Goshen there was light. Exemption is not a new phenomenon. All through scripture, you find out that God's people were exempted from plagues, from disaster, from all kinds of things. Breakthrough. Many people desire to break out of certain limits. The Bible says you shall enlarge and spread out from the north to the south and so on and so forth. Remembrance. You will be amazed how many people have come here today and their single prayer point 
is apostle i'm surrounded by many people who can be used by god to help me but it looks like there is a spirit that sits upon their memory and makes them to not remember me direction i'm confused where do i go to to the left or right should i travel abroad or should i remain in nigeria should i leave abuja or remain here should i keep working in my office or do I find my way somewhere? Do I keep doing my professional work or start business? Direction is very important as far as destiny actualization is concerned. Are you learning? Number next, whatever number it is, strength. Strength. Many have come here exhausted emotionally, exhausted physically, and the Bible says strength is small hallelujah it was isaiah i believe chapter what would that be 40 speaking about the renewal of strength it says has thou not heard has thou not known the everlasting god the lord is that true that there is no he does not get weary there is no searching of his understanding and then it says even the young men will be weary the youth he says he does not faint neither is he weary there is no searching of his understanding Verse 29, he giveth power to the faint. Somebody say power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Do you know why people faint? People faint because of the consistent battles. Provided you are alive and you live in a world like ours today, there are many things that sap your energy emotionally. You may be a parent and just when you're trying to manage the issue of no salary, no payment, your children just come with a PTA letter to let you know that the school fees has been increased by 50%. And chances are excellent that you can become emotionally fatigued. It's true. The Bible says, a merry heart doeth good like medicine. It says, but a broken spirit can dry up the bones. I receive text messages, emails from people complaining, and you hear them say, I am tired. I am tired is a psychological way of saying I'm about to give up. What do you think leads men to suicide? You know, it used to be something that people laugh at. Africans laugh at people and say, these white guys killing themselves. But you see, that spirit patiently crept his way into Africa and right now someone just strolls around as if he's going to the market and the next thing they pick his dead body somewhere with a letter I am tired of life I forbid that over your life and I forbid that over your children there's a very particular psychological case that I've observed that is on the increase and on the rise right now they call it mental health mental what they call it mental mental disorder huh? not direct madness but mental health this especially among teenagers there is a spirit that has just trapped that demography and is destroying those people you will see a young boy misbehaving and you will think he's just being nasty and naughty until he does something to hurt himself or herself god is able to increase strength it used to be an embarrassment for men to cry those days. No matter what it is, they say, be a man. Be a man means let me not see tears from your eyes. But it's amazing how men cry like children now. They say, listen, you better join me to cry because sooner or later, we will all cry. The reality that is before us now. Hmm. The concept of be a man has become obsolete because the vicissitudes of life have beat down even the strongest of men to become like children. After all, Jesus wept. That is comforting for someone who has been crying. The balance is that he did not weep forever. The Bible already says, weep not. Weep not. The current speakings of God is that you weep not because the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed and he is worthy to open the book and unlock the scrolls and for someone who came here weeping God has given us a beautiful handkerchief to wipe those tears forever but I submit to you that men and women alike can become overwhelmed by the situations of life rent issue plus health issue plus causes plus the wickedness of men 
Are we together? Plus all kinds of prejudices that come with this life can equal breakdowns of any sort. And sometimes, even if you are Jesus, you may be overwhelmed and find yourself crying. Strength. How about revival? There are people who are saying, I'm, I'm not here for healing. My spiritual life has gone as low as it can get. Prayer, zero. Fasting, zero. Word study, zero. Commitment towards spiritual things, zero. Passion for the house of God, zero. Love for the brethren, zero. You are in desperate need for revival. What does it mean to revive? To revive means to bring back to a position of stature, stability, and vitality. Transformation. There are many believers who are in need, desperate need for transformation. Transformation it was, is what sponsors becoming Christ-like. There are many people who are saved and it's only because you saw them come to the front here, there's no other evidence in their lives that they've met Jesus. Every other thing looks like Satan. You are in need of transformation. The Bible says to not be conformed to this world, but to be renewed, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Are we still together? That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Prosperity. There are people who are here and they are not hiding it. There's nothing to hide. They are here simply because they are tired of financial problems. It's as simple as that. And do not feel embarrassed that you came here because of that. Where else would you come for help? Did the Bible not say that he will send you help from his sanctuary? The house of God is a place of help. Many people laugh at the church in sarcasm and say the church cannot help people even economically. After all, what do preachers know? When you have financial problems, you need some kind of economic intelligent perspectives. It may not be true. Not every man of God is dull. God is helping all of us. But there are people who have opened up themselves to the whole counsel of God. Make no mistakes to think that the church cannot help people to be empowered economically with the dignity of kingdom integrity. The house of God is the ground and the pillar of truth. Are we together? And like you would be learning, there is always a prophetic advantage to wealth that the world cannot give you. Yes. Wealth, I taught you last week, so do not forget the reward system of the kingdom. I have taught you series upon series on finances. We have one scheduled for this year, and I will continue to teach. But let me tell you sincerely, you want to be empowered financially, sustainably. Do not embrace value and intellectual approach to finances alone. The world is wicked. There are spirits. They don't care how economically sound you are. Samaria, I believe, had people who were economically sound, but famine still came. The world is going through the formation of another, another kind of financial tragedy that we hope does not bring people to their knees again. Every once in a while it happens, it's a circle. But the people that do know their God, the Bible says they shall be strong capacity and they shall do exploits. It says thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads. We walk through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. Are we together? God can prosper men. God can prosper men. There is a kingdom's way of prosperity this is not what i'm teaching i'm just showing you the major needs of people and i'll be lying we both will be lying to not admit that it is one of the major issues that has brought people right now most people are already standing at the corridors of compromise simply because of financial limitations school fees house rent monies for expenditures and all kinds of things. I think it is insensitive of a man of God to ignore these things in light of the current happenings in our world. 
I consider it quite insensitive. Any true leader, any true shepherd that loves his people must be able to make his contribution as far as empowering the people economically is concerned. And the key is light. Both spiritual, prophetic, and economic intelligence is what needs to weave themselves together to get you completely out of poverty. But let me tell you, getting out of poverty as an experience is a reality. And your whole lifetime does not have to be invested to make that project happen. If you follow God's way, it is the way of wisdom. Many people arrogantly would not listen to the counsel of God and continue to double across paths that only repeat pain. Like many of you have refused to listen to God. I know what I need to do. I studied economics. I'm not insulting your pedigree. But we're talking of higher spiritual laws that produce results that can be proven here and now. My son, he says, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. He says, do not let them depart from out of their mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. The Bible then says they are life, not to everybody, to those who find them and health to their flesh. You're not empowered economically. You will live a sad life, an angry one for that matter. It will now extend to jealousy, anger and all the negative attributes that come with lack and let me tell you it is not the will of god to be and to live in poverty let me repeat it again for your hearing and to strengthen your conviction it is not the will of god regardless what the economic situation is right now you must first believe that there is a way out of this for me not by playing pranks and crooks and by demonic manipulation and some of these negative things with the dignity of kingdom integrity you can rise and can i tell you you can rise on time god gives men speed so that they can serve his purposes he told pharaoh let my people go that they may go and serve me when he tells that financial pharaoh to let you go is so that you can have the liberty to serve him Financial resources help you to serve God in truth and to serve him properly. You can become a blessing to people. If you are healed, you are healed for yourself. But you see, when God prospers you, you can become an extension of his love to all and sundry. If you believe that, shout amen. amen. The meaning of that is that every financial pharaoh that has trapped you, for as long as you have found yourself here tonight in the name that is above all names and by the power that raised Christ from the dead, financial shame and embarrassment must give way from your life. Yeah. Do you believe the teaching so far? The love of God, regardless your condition, is unconditional. But the manifestation of his promises in your life and my life, the manifestation of speed, fruitfulness, restoration, healing, deliverance, exemption, breakthrough, remembrance, direction, strength, revival, transformation, prosperity, and the list goes on. Every one of these needs and desires are controlled by the aforementioned forces. If you know how to engage them, then you will stand victorious. This is why we teach week in, week out, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, exposing you to be able to handle these forces with the mastery of a professional so that you will be able to command all kinds of victory. And may that be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. The era of living a defeated Christian life is over for you. So if you take the time to take responsibility and look inwards, you will find out that it is not the lack of the love of God in your life that is responsible for where you are. You are here for a miracle service and God is going to be visiting us shortly. But you see the word of God is coming to prepare your heart. 
Don't say, God, are you there? Do you love me? Rather, take responsibility and ask, which of these nine forces have I ignored? Which of these nine forces do I not understand? Do you know you can dedicate the remaining part of March to say, let me take, for instance, the force of praise and, and, and examine it and understand how it works. I will praise God every day for the remaining part of March. And you will be surprised. The realm of all round rest, the Bible calls it rest round about, is the heritage of every believer in Christ. And it is a possibility that a man can be blessed in all things. The Bible says in Genesis, I believe, 24 and verse 1, it says, and Abraham was old and well stricken in age. Read with me, please, the remaining part. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in how many things? A man can be blessed in all things. Now, when the anointing of the Spirit, let me teach you this and then we begin to pray. Let me show you what happens in a service like this because many of us really do not appreciate the ministry of the anointing when the anointing of the spirit of god hovers around the people even by the ministry of the spirit you know what happens the anointing of the spirit and i've taught you here when it is made manifest in the lives of the people the anointing expresses itself in two forms principally according to first corinthians i believe 124 is that 1 Corinthians 1 24? Yes. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greek, he said Christ from the word Christos, the anointing, is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Someone say the power of God. Then say the wisdom of God. One more time, say the power of God and the wisdom of God. The Bible says Christ can be made manifest as the power of God and Christ can be made manifest as the wisdom of God. That means every time you see the anointing of the Spirit resting upon people, the anointing is manifesting for others as the wisdom of God, guiding you and helping you to know what to do. For others, the anointing is manifesting as the power of God. What is the assignment of the power of God? I've taught you many, but principally, especially for tonight, the assignment of the power of God with respect to a miracle service like this is creation and correction. To create and to correct. To create and to correct. So when the power of God, when the anointing manifests as the power of God, it is there to create and it is there to correct. Correct what? A situation that was not so from the beginning, like your health condition. It is incredible that in a moment right now, we are going to begin to pray and you will watch people who came here sick just like that. And the power of God rests upon them and supernatural miracles begin to happen and all kinds of other supernatural occurrences happen but i remind you that as you receive the anointing you must position yourself to know that the anointing will express itself in two dimensions number one the wisdom of god that means for someone you may fall down and stand up and you may think that it's just a deliverance that happened to you. It may not be so. It may be an impartation of supernatural wisdom. You stand up from that experience and your mind begins to function at a supernatural frequency. You know what to do. You know how to apply the laws of the kingdom to get results. For you, the anointing of the spirit has come as the wisdom of God. For someone you are in a situation right now that does not require advice and counsel, you need a head-on collision with the power of God as simple as that. For instance, if you are in a situation of witchcraft, all kinds of yokes and curses, spirits of delay, all kinds of manifestations of darkness, you are here with a medical report that is threatening your life, there is no counsel right there. Maybe it can happen afterwards. What you need is the anointing revealing itself as the power of God. Are we together? 
so that you don't keep expecting the anointing to manifest as the power of God alone whereas the financial situation that is plaguing you may require the manifestation of wisdom so that you know what to do so that you guide your financial decisions are right maybe you are living a life that is by far higher than your financial level no matter what the power of god does the bankruptcy of wisdom will still return you back to that situation so what you need is the anointing of the spirit energizing you by wisdom to know how to begin to walk now you engage the force of patience and you know that it is not lack of faith to remain in that one room until god begins to increase you the spirit that pushes you to live a fake life I must buy an SUV of 10 million, 20 million, whereas all you have home and abroad is 2 million. You see, that's not wisdom. So what you need is, as you fall down, you better know what the Holy Ghost is doing. When you stand up, it should be that foolishness that remains on the ground. You stand up, lifted, changed. Are we together? Yes. That one day you are the one who will buy cars and give people, but for now, move with faith, and patience listen 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 no distraction please listen are we together yes it is amazing how many problems believers have are largely self-inflicted I told you that sometimes when we blame demons they are very happy and even flattered taking credit for things that they are not exactly say, well I know I caused this one but I'm shocked that you are giving me the credit for this one I watch you make bad decisions using your will. To the Greek and to the Jews, Christ is revealed as the wisdom of God and revealed as the power of God. Revealed as the wisdom of God. And wisdom is expressed, I have taught you here, in the quality of superior decisions. You make decisions that are pro-destiny. You make decisions that are pro-advancement. The assignment of foolishness is to compel you to make decisions that tie you down and keep you at the same level perpetually. When the spirit of wisdom comes upon you, it translates, it is revealed in the quality and the excellency of the decisions that you make. Men like Dr. Mudok will say, decisions decide destiny. It is true. You can decide to remain this way, even though God has spoken by the spirit that is our year of open doors. The doors may remain closed for you because you are not willing to make the kind of decision by the Spirit. And you see, you cannot make a quality decision with insufficient information. This is where the Spirit of Wisdom comes. You are brooding over every darkness. You are causing light to shine. The Holy Ghost is brooding over every darkness. You are causing light to shine from darkness. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed by the teaching? So next time you go, as you leave this place tonight, and you find a believer who is saying, I don't know if Jesus loves me. You lovingly draw that person and say, my friend, my brother, or my sister, I want to tell you from the authority of scripture that regardless your situation, your situation is too small a basis to measure or describe the love of Jesus. The problem is not Jesus loving you or not loving you. It's been settled. I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. God loves the richest and the poorest. God loves the wisest and the most foolish. God loves the most fervent Christian and the most um, one who has turned his back away from God. They are loved by God. As far as God is concerned, God is love. But the manifestation of the promises of God and the possibilities that my life and your life will command is not just dependent on his love. He loved us and gave up himself. He gave us his spirit. He gave us his word. It is up to us now to take responsibility in partnership with the Holy Spirit and begin to release these forces. 
I will recap one more time, then our prayer begins. The force of light, the force of prayer, the force of fasting, the force of faith, the force of praise, the force of favor, the force of sacrifice, the force of patience, the force of the prophetic. Aside from fasting, you can experience every one of those forces right now. A correct church program should give you an opportunity to release all of these forces from the opening prayer and the praise worship. So whilst you are enjoying praise and worship, you're not just enjoying musical prowess and excellence. They are priming you to participate and release these forces. Are we together? You have been patient, and that is a force too. So every other force can come and work in your life. No wonder you will not leave disappointed. Because having engaged these forces and having positioned yourself by faith to now receive even the prophetic, how could your life remain the same? So that when you walk out of this place, it is not magic. You can, you can, there is, there is an intelligence to describing the manifestation of the promises of God in your life. When someone tells you, you came for koinonia and this is Monday already, look the kind of testimonies you have. You can say glory be to God, but you can tell them you too can have that same testimony. Let me show you the forces that were at work. Now you start like a lecturer with confidence. The force of prayer, you will tell them. The force of fasting, the force of light. And hope that they do not think you are playing games with them. Because if they ignore these forces, I submit to you by the authority of scripture. Anybody who ignores any of these forces, you have signed in to live a defeated life. Perpetually so. But now, thanks be to God, the Bible says, which causes us always to triumph. How does he cause us to triumph? By giving us access to light. Access to light. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.